Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Gersha from Technical Option Traders Inc. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, just before we begin, a humble request, if you can just like and subscribe to the channel, uh, just to help me beat the YouTube algorithm, I'd greatly appreciate that. All right, so before further ado, let's get started in the analysis today and see what's been going on in the markets. All right, so the first thing overall, with this head and shoulder pattern on the S&P 500, and this is also available on the Triple Q, is showing up and it's pretty aggressive. And uh, it's starting to get a little... Uh, interesting here uh, with the, with the way the market is headed, right? So we're getting starting on the weekly view here. So this looks like almost a bear flag on the weekly, right? So let's have a look at this. Okay, so we'll have to keep an eye on this and see how this unfolds. Okay, but this does look like a bear flag. An important level that we want to watch is if this breaks right here and closes below the 365 level. Uh, we're going to work our way down pretty aggressively to about 347, okay? That's the first thing we want to pay attention to, okay? Uh, second thing we want to pay attention to is a volume. This is nice uh, sell selling volume here where the selling volume picked up on this move down. So this level at 415 becomes a very important pivot level, right? So this is what I'm watching for here is 430 uh, with this sell and this sell in in, uh, in uh, uh, combination, right? So over the past few days and the past few weeks, we can see we've only had two green weeks, okay? Um, so that's so dominantly, there's a lot of selling pressure on the weekly. Let's switch over to the daily here. Daily showing something similar uh, with the bearish flag here. Uh, it's uh, unable to hold this level right here and it's breaking down now, but it still stays sticking to the range uh, with the volatility. Jerome Powell speaking today saying that, you know, they're not sure about what's going to happen. The U.S. economy should be able to hold and using terms like don't know uh, about how a soft landing can happen. It is a possibility, but it could be challenging. Think about this, okay? Jerome Powell it gets paid millions of dollars a year or a very high salary to crunch numbers okay and to make predictions and he is using terminology that is filled with uncertainty so that is not very positive uh, for the for the future and if history is any kind of witness or any kind of you can say testament in history every time the Fed has become uncertain the market have turned very volatile, which has led to very uncertain times. So we have to pay attention to the tone and the wording of someone who deals with numbers. Numbers don't lie. They just show you what, what is there and what is in front of you. It is up to you to mitigate and determine what is the best way to proceed forward. So if we look at the S&P 500 right now, every rally is being sold and it's being sold pretty aggressively. However, this whole move, uh, if we see this whole up move, has decreasing or flat volume, okay? Uh, let's look at the one hour chart right now on the S&P 500 based on technicals. It, it consolidated here between 387 and about 393 and then it broke down here. But the bigger level I'm watching on the hour is 372. If 372 breaks, we easily go down to 365, right? So that's what it looks like. This consolidation has set to a lower high. So this is consolidation and breakdown. So once again, the dominance, the domination to the downside continues on the S&P 500. Looking at the Triple Q's weekly uh, head and shoulder pattern right about here. Uh, breaking down nicely here. Triple Q's uh, testing uh, the 200-day EMA on the weekly time frame as well. Uh, bear flag just like the S&P 500. Huge sell volume here, uh, which is right about here where, where the aggressiveness came from. And then uh, confirmation, the second confirmation right here at 315. Now, if we look at the daily here, same thing. Uh, this bear flag is holding up uh, as well on the daily for the Triple Q's. And if we just keep an eye on this and just keep watching the triple Qs here with the rising rates, I don't see how this helps uh, tech stocks at all. Uh, tech stocks are down heavily already for the year. Um, you know, they've wiped out almost two years of gains here and uh, they're turning. Um, so we'll see how much dam more damage is left in tech. Uh, I don't see a signs of a bottom just yet. I see a continuation that's going to happen here. Uh, if we lo do look at the one hour time frame continuation uh, at the 295 level, unable to get to the 300 and we have a sell off again to about 282. If 282 fails to hold, we're going to work our way down to about 267 very fast on a triple Qs, right? So right now, triple Qs are very, very bearish. Um, you know, they, there's no other way around it. Dow Jones, let's look at the weekly here uh, first. Look at the Dow, right? So the Dow has a huge level, which is right about here where the down move started from. And then this little push here that we had. And now it just continues this volatile, like this gap fill, not push to the downside. If this level holds right now, 
the 315 level, we're going to work our way down aggressively uh, very fast to about uh, 295. And if, if this level gets defeated at 295, uh, this is already at the 2019 high before the 2020 crash occurred. Um, so we have to be mindful of that. Then Dow can easily flip down to about 285, right? So this is something that we want to pay attention to. But the characteristics of the volume and the move up were already weak, uh, declining volume, not aggressive buying pressure right now. So, uh, and this is just a high volatile range uh, for Dow. For Dow, and uh, this is something you want to avoid. You want to keep your eye on this, but you want to avoid trading or investing per se. You want to wait for the market to turn, and you want to wait for the right opportunities. There have been fabulous opportunities over the past few weeks to trade, but right now is not the right. Not right now is not the time I'm looking for that. Right. So IWM has gotten bear flags okay all over the place okay so one here this is on a daily and another one is setting up here okay so unable to go up consolidation breakdown now we're in the consolidation again retesting the 170 now the bigger break comes at the break of 162 all right if so if 162 breaks we're going to work our way down aggressively and we're possibly going to go uh, i'm not really sure here but looking like around 155 uh, to about possible 143 but multiple stops are you know are possible along the way right so so far this break right here 163 we we go down to 155 ish and then we work our way down to 142 but looking at the characteristics of iwm looking at the weekly once again a lot more selling pressure than buying pressure over the last few weeks okay daily the same thing right aggressive sell started here volume die then selling pressure increase again on this these drops right here and once again uh, selling pressure is coming back in remember in july we have a couple of things right so july we have the Q, the q2 gdp okay uh data coming out if the gdp is contracted in the united states that is officially a recession okay also uh, in july we have the fmoc interest rate decision okay and, and then we also have the starting of earnings season towards the end of July. So July is going to be a very, very volatile month, and you must pay attention to what is happening uh, in the market. So uh, looking at uh, VXX, VXX holding this level right, right about here. And uh, like I said, I need VXX below 20 for me to feel comfortable, but this is right now just in the range right now. Uh, you know, it is lower, so that's good, but with it, the market is also lower. So that's uh, kind of okay-ish but it's not something that i want to see right so that means the fear is decreasing in the market so that means that people are so a lot of what this could possibly mean a lot of these companies are returning to their fair valuations okay so we have to keep an eye on this and see how this plays out in the long run uh looking at gold gold breaking down here below 170 multiple tests of the 170 level now if it breaks down 169 okay so if it closes below 169 uh 167 here uh, we could possibly like this is a break of a trend line multiple tests on this trend line right here Right as we can see that so this is a break again uh, I would say the break of 167 could take a short position easily to about 161 uh, Right now gold is not looking very good. That's this could be due to the uh, G7 decision where they could be looking to ban gold coming out of Russia So that is something that we want to pay attention to but so far overall market uh, you know, it's, it's just bearish, bearish, right? So now as this move was happening here on KWeb, I did mention this right here, uh, reducing volume. So volume is decreasing while the move is increasing, right? So that means some people could be getting out. And what do we have? We have a pullback here. So that's perfectly fine. Pullbacks are perfectly normal. But what we want to pay attention to is what happens to this trend line, okay? Does this trend line get broken? If it does get broken, how much, right? Like, And where does the uh, price action or how much volume picks up there, right? Also, we want to pay attention to this area right about here, which is a 28 level, 28, 29 level. If this level gets defeated, uh, trend line breaks, then we could be on a possible move to about 24 here. OK, so it looks like, uh, you know, a reversal is in play, but we want to pay attention and watch these levels as they unfold. But for now, KWAP and China is fine. Just a pullback. We want to see what happens over the next coming days. But the pullback is happening on low volume as well. I want to see volume increase if real selling pressure is going to come in here. Right. So that's ARC here. Um, ARC just consolidating here. Um, not a lot to do here um, unless it gets about 46. Uh, that would be a nice, uh, nice, something nice to see. 
and then 52 is a big level if it gets about 52 we can take a nice move to the upside uh but for arc otherwise a uh, big level to watch is 35 all right so we'll see what happens with this we'll keep an eye on the markets right now the markets are very volatile very uncertain uh, a lot of uncertainty in the market so we'll have to keep an eye and be care be very careful as you're trading this is my overall analysis i'll see you guys tomorrow